the world is fucked. The world is sick and it's like making me sick. Do you know what I mean? We're talking about how we maintain revolutionary optimism. This is about emotional activism. This is something I really care about. Uh, I know a lot of people in here are probably younger than me and like are probably like newer to to like political struggle than I am. I've been an activist, fucking capital A, active <laughs> since I was 18 years old. And uh, I've gone through a lot emotionally as a result of that. A lot of like depression, a lot of therapy. I fucking moved to Vietnam for three years so that I didn't fucking, you know, myself. You know, like, I, it, it's, it's, it takes a lot out of you, you know? And, and, and there's something that I want to be really, really clear about is that like th progress is not, it doesn't all happen in one fucking moment. You know, it doesn't happen in one fucking moment. It's not going to be consistent. It's going to be a lifelong struggle. And that hurts to realize, especially when you're in, if you're in and of these movements in a very, very deep capacity. If you've spent a lot of time at encampments over the past month, you probably know what I'm, you're probably feeling what I'm talking about right now. This po the post movement depression is one of the worst feelings in the world. And I, I, I that's why I wanted to hold space for this right now, because I, I, we just, the encampments, a lot of them are still going. I'm not saying that, that that struggle is over by any means. For people who are maybe a really big part of it, if you were really in it and you felt that the beauty of being a community with people that care about something like you do, if you felt that beauty and you felt that hope and you felt like something, like we can actually change this, you, you believed in that and you know, you saw what happened today in Rafa, like I'm, I understand. I felt it too today. You know, I felt it too. Okay. It's not, it, it's totally normal. And it's what makes you human. This is what gives you, this is, this is your soul. And it's, you need to protect this part of yourself that feels that, that kind of shame and that kind of like, you know, anger and, 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 and hurt whenever you see the videos coming out of Rafa. That's something to protect. That's not something to alienate. It's not something to be ashamed of. It's totally normal and it's and it's beautiful and it what makes you, it's what makes you human. Okay, but also we I want to be I want this to be a space where we can all come together and like be actually like supportive of each other in a way that's more than you know we're gonna keep up and and this is gonna be a space where you can educate yourself on the you know on on the things happening in the news and then and. and the activism and all of that stuff this is going to be that space but it's also going to be a space where we can talk about how we rebuild and how we keep each other you know how we how we maintain our mental states and how we can how we can remove ourselves from the struggle in order to to do personal work and how we you know what i mean like the emotional activism that kind of shit is really really important how do you maintain hope in a society that Everything around you exists to beat that hope out of you and to make you feel like things can only be the way that they are right now. That a better world is not possible. How do you how do you deal with that? And and I also like want to talk specifically to Twitch chatters and to people on Twitch too. Is that there is a difference between theory and praxis and the things that theory like and like understanding the news the things that that makes you feel in a lot of ways they are countered and solved by the praxis so if you're not going out to your encampment and if you're not putting yourself in spaces and finding spaces by all means you know by any means possible i don't care what how small your town is can you organize a group of three people can you find two other people and have a meeting at a coffee shop in public and actively talk about how you're going to get more people into that group? Do you know what I mean? If you're not doing that kind of work, that then you're going to, you know what I mean? You're going to feel like you're isolated and you're going to feel like you're alone. 
But if you're not doing that work, you're going to feel like you're missing something. There's going to be a hole in your heart where you're like, I'm alone in this. And like, I care about it so much. And you're going to start resenting everyone around you because they don't care about it. If you have this care, if your heart is already invested in the struggle, it's your heart is going to, it's just going to continually be broken unless you are working with real people in the real world and fighting for somebody that's close to you. And I hate, I, oftentimes when these think, kind of things are talked about, it's not like the, the onus is placed on you. It's like, well, you should stop watching the news. And it's not like the world is fucked. Like the world is sick and, and it's like making me sick. Like, do you know, do you know what I mean? It's never like that. It's never presented like that. Yeah. Just stop knowing what's going on. Yeah. Right. Like what the fuck? Of course it's going to be, of course I'm going to be happier if I'm not aware, but that's not going to make the people affected happier. Like, and also the, what about the ways that I contextualize the ways that I am affected? Like, you know, the ways that every one of us are affected. Like, what, what, what about that? Okay, I wanted to check this out. So if you guys haven't seen this channel, this is a beautiful Instagram channel from within Gaza. Check out the routine in war zone. I started our day by going to a flower distribution center and we got some flower. Then we came back with our Ferrari Porsche. Then I met Omar. <laughs> yes, sir. Was more? Mean, Dude, I love that Taylor is like on every comment. <laughs> Fucking shout out Taylor Lorenz. Day 42 of sharing our daily routine in our zone. We started the day by going to the barber to get a haircut, and the haircut was really bad, to be honest. <laughs> I don't see any difference. There's a difference. Making french fries in the street. Potato! <laughs> Potato! <laughs> if you guys don't know, this is another, like, uh, kind of viral, like, TikToker who is, uh, filming inside of Gaza right now. This is my sister Samah and um, her son is uh, deeply injured. She's lost her home, lost her boy. Also, I think this is like, like to me, this is like hopeful. After everything else we've watched tonight, seeing people thrive and provide for their community like this gives me hope, you know what I mean? This this literally does like re-energize me towards the cause. This isn't them suffering, this is them thriving. This is them making a life out of the, the horrible situation that they've been given. This is this is perseverance. You know, like there's something there's something beautiful about this. It's her girl, so they come and they <clears throat> together and sort of like uh a therapeutic activity for them and they provide meals, alive meals. Hani says the soup kitchen has given his family a sense of purpose. Israel's bombing- As a member of a different diaspora, trust is huge and it, and it gets muddled, muddied with things like colorism, corruption and stuff. But I think sometimes you gotta take that leap of faith and trust. It's happening, uh, it's even happening locally. Palestine has brought so many people together. We've been able to make uh, people's lives easier and better, both in the US and Palestine like the excess food from uh, university encampments go back to the community and underhouse neighbors we keep us safe. Yeah, I documented this on my live stream the night of the UCLA sweep, but there was an incredible, incredible effort to get all of the food out of the encampment and load it into a U-Haul where it was taken to other encampments or taken to, you know, it was donated. Like, uh, it, it was really, really beautiful to see and, and really like moving actually. How much the entire com uh, encampment community, like, you know what I mean? ...campaign has destroyed much of Gaza's telecommunication infrastructure, limiting Hani and Mahmoud to voice notes... Yeah, no, it's, I understand, Lily. And like I said, Lily, if you need to... Part of what we're going to talk about later is if you need to back off. There's no shame. Like, if you need to, if you need to turn it off and go take a walk, like, that's totally okay. That's totally normal, and there's no shame in that at all. It's totally fine. It doesn't make you any less of a, of a, a fighter in this cause. Like, 
we all have to take breaks sometimes and, and recharge and recenter ourselves. Like, that's totally normal and okay. ويقفوا بجانبي ويتفرجوا على اهلنا في الشمال انا بدي اوفر اللي مش متوفر والمؤسسات الدوليه مش قادره توفره انا محمود المدون بدي اوفره لاهلنا في الشمال قطاع غزه. Video, man. What a great video. Just such good reporting. Using the example of the cave, Plato explains that a person becomes enlightened when they turn from the shadows on the wall and exit the cave to see the real world. But when they go. Y'all know, know, y'all know the cave, right? Okay, this stream, me right here, shadows on the wall. <laughs> we, I am the shadow. I'm telling you to get the fuck out of your cave, bro. <laughs> get the fuck out of your cave, dude. <laughs> Go outside, their eyes are overwhelmed by the sun. And then when they head back down into the cave, the prisoners mock their hazy vision. Once... I wish this video was 45 minutes long and it went into marks more and how Marx instructs, or like, and analyzes how humans interact with the world. Uh, like, that whole dynamic is like very interesting, and Ingalls, also. Uh, <laughs> let's watch a video about Marx in Spanish, no. Uh, and then also like, yeah, maybe some bell hooks about love, and I need to find people where I am or even know how to meet them. I wanna get out, I've been atomized and isolated and alienated for too long and I don't know how to connect. Man, yeah, I feel you. Becca, yeah, Becca gave great advice, like, yeah, comic book stores, coffee shops. Also, like, you know, I don't know if Facebook is, like, a great space where you live, but, like, you would be surprised. And I feel like of all social medias, like, Facebook is the most, like, real-world one. It's, it's a weird suggestion, but it might work. Seriously, if you like look for groups, like leftist groups with your town's name on them or something, uh, or, or if it doesn't exist, like maybe start one, I don't know. But maybe I'm talking like a organizing in like 2011 or something. I don't know. How did they do it? How did they keep their spirits up in the claustrophobic confines of the Coochie Tunnels through the ceaseless terror of the Hanoi bombing campaign in the midst of atrocities like the My Lai Massacre? How did they do it? I think one important aspect to consider is what Ho Chi Minh called revolutionary optimism. Optimism isn't always a good thing. In fact, we have to distinguish somehow between revolutionary optimism and optimism in general. It must not be unfounded optimism. The perception and understanding of the revolutionary about all things must be rooted in the material world. But back to Ho Chi Minh, he never stopped believing that Vietnam would win its independence from colonialism and imperialism, but he was also a strict materialist. He knew that tremendous sacrifice would have to be made for victory. Your optimism cannot come from just hoping that it will happen. And this is also why I encourage you to get the fuck out of your cave, to go out into the world and to organize. It won't happen without you. This is not a spectator sport, okay? You have to go learn these lessons in the real world. And you might get a little bit of a lesson from watching my IRL streams, but you're not getting the same lesson that I'm getting being there. You understand? Do not take my IRL streams as a substitute for going to a protest. Do not. So revolutionary optimism is sober optimism, which <clears throat> recognizes the limitations, the challenges, the struggles, and the sacrifices that have to be made. It is a matter of facing the facts and reconciling our dream of liberation with the harshness of reality. You might, so yeah, maybe a protest is a good space to meet an organizer, you know, so you might, you might have to expose yourself a little bit at the very beginning, you know? Just like take that first leap and jump in and like expose yourself to that risk. And I know it's gonna be, it's gonna cause you some anxiety and, and I, that's probably rightfully so. But even if that's not something you're willing to do, you might need to do that just like once or twice in order to like meet a, an organizer and be like, hey, how, you know, like I really care about this. I wanna be involved, but uh, like protesting isn't really my bag. Is there like, 
other ways that I can be involved. And like the protesters during, or the organizers during a protest are probably going to be really busy. You know, like they're going to be pulled in a bunch of different ways, but like you might be able to get somebody's info. And then like, that's just one connection that you can use to, to help, you know, like genuinely as an organizer, as somebody who's organized a lot, people who want to help are the biggest asset and they will treat you as such. Like that's, that's the whole thing. <laughs> if you have a desire to be useful, like people will find use for you, like in, in whatever capacity you can afford and what you, what you can do, you know, especially if you're the one that's coming forward and be like, Hey, I want to help. Like they're going to really, really appreciate that. That's not going to be something that's like looked down on, you know? So it was so hard finding people when I was in, when I was at school in rural Nebraska, I went to a protest and I met so many wonderful people. That's how I found that crowd, but I moved and now I have to restart. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've gone through that too, impil of moving and being a stranger in a, in a strange place and trying to rebuild like that. It's not easy, but you have to do it, right? Rural areas get left behind. Well, that just, doesn't that kind of shout out the need for four rural organizers who are doing that work there. You know what I mean? We need more rural organizers. You, there, do you know how many people come into this chat and say, well, oh, I can't organize because there's like, you know, I live in a small area. There's like nobody around me. And it's like, there's enough people in this chat. <laughs> like, literally, like you think, how many people don't even know about Twitch and feel that way, you know? We need rural organizers to, to, to do that work. Like, and that could be you. And it literally just starts with going to your coffee shop and putting up a poster. Get some good design, you know what I mean? Like, go to canva.com, make a good design, put up, a, put up a, a, a something that moves you, and say, we're meeting here at this time. And if people show up, then they show up. If people don't show up, then whatever. You're, you're in the same place you started. You didn't lose anything, <laughs> you know? At least you felt good about doing something for a few days. You know what I mean? Our people's war against the U.S. and national salvation, although it has to go through more hardships and sacrifices, will definitely win completely. It's a sure thing. No matter how difficult or arduous, our people will definitely win. The American And this is something that should give you hope is that the history of colonialism is people winning. <laughs> is the colonized people winning. American empire must get out of our country. Our nation will definitely unite. The people of the North and the South will definitely gather in one house. Ho Chi Minh was certainly not the only figure in revolutionary history to practice revolutionary optimism. We can also cite the works of Che Guevara, Pyotr Kropotkin, Thomas Sankara, Rosa Luxemburg, and countless others. But one figure who I turn to again and again when I feel myself slipping into doomerism and doubt is Fred Hampton, one of the founders of the Black Panther Party, whose speeches embodied unbridled revolutionary optimism. You know, I don't know if you guys need to get, like, do math here. 21 years old. Everything would be all right if everything was put back in the hands of the people. And we're going to have to put it back in the hands of the people. Socialism is the people. You're afraid of yourself. If you're afraid of socialism, you're afraid of yourself. We know they have our pictures. We know they're looking for us. We know they want us. But we're still saying that even though we could be in a sense, as far as this system goes, on the mountaintop, we in the Black Panther Party because of our dedication and understanding what's in the valley, knowing that the people in the valley, knowing that we originally came from the valley, knowing that our flag is the same flag as the people in the valley, knowing that our enemy is on the mountaintop, our friends are in the valley. We say even though it's nice to be on the mountaintop, we're going back to the valley. <laughs> You can't do it unless you believe that you can do it. Every Great video. Everybody in the state of Illinois is going to have to be involved or even around the revolution because we're going to have one. We're going to we're gonna have to do more than talk. We're going to have to do more than listen. We're going to even have to do more than learn. 
We're going to have to start practicing, and that's very hard. We got to start learning, and you learn through practice. We got to start making mistakes, and you learn through making mistakes. True. We got to start getting out there with the people. And a lot of times we think we're better than the people, but that's an insult, and that's criminal. Think you're better than the people. But we got to get together and learn where it's at. It's going to take a lot of hard work. Oof. That was a great video, bro. Really, really good video.